everyone. Welcome to the Wooly Wonka Fibers podcast. My name is Anne, and this is a podcast about my knitting, my spinning, um, some other crafty goodness, as well as my indie dye and design business. Today is Sunday, March uh, 5th. It has been a while since I podcasted, so I'm going to try to get you guys caught up with what's been going on here at this end with a short podcast. If you are a returning viewer, thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me today. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. I hope you find some fun things uh, to inspire you. Today's podcast is going to be a little bit different than kind of my normal, typical version. So if you are new to the podcast, um, you might want to check some of my older recordings just to get a better feel for what I usually talk about. Um, this podcast will be a little bit truncated. Um, I don't have a ton of things I'm working on to share with you guys. There'll be more of a stitches recap and um, just a few odds and ends of things to kind of get back into the groove of podcasting. So uh, I am back from Stitches West. If I saw you there, I know several of you introduced yourselves and noted that you watched the podcast. Thank you for doing that. Um, I drove, so I left two Tuesdays ago, um, to do the drive to California. I drove as far as Kingman, Arizona, which is west of Flagstaff. Uh, and then that was Tuesday. So that was a full eight hours of driving. And then about another eight and a half got me to the conference center on Wednesday afternoon. I opted to offload everything, which actually worked out great. There was no waiting. I could get a helper right away. We offloaded my car. I just put everything in my booth, but didn't set up. Um, it was just out of my car, which was great. And then I went off to the hotel, had dinner, went, got an early bedtime, and got up early the next morning to be at the um, conference center at 8. So I set up that uh, would be Thursday morning, ran back to the hotel, took a shower, grabbed sort of a lunch, late lunch, early dinner, and then ran back to the conference center to vend from five to eight. And then Friday was a complete and utter madhouse. Um, it was pretty busy on Thursday night, but it's a smaller group of people who can get into the marketplace. Friday, the day seemed like it was about half an hour. It was so busy all day long. Um, I think I finally got a bathroom break at like 3.30 maybe. Um, my friends, the yarn guys, Dennis and Jeffrey, were there. It was super convenient because their booth was just one booth, kind of the next aisle over behind mine. Dennis's sister, Jenny, was there, and she came over and stood in my booth so I could run to the restroom or go grab... Uh, a bottled water or just you know have a minute to kind of get my head screwed on straight. Um, Friday I sold out of I believe it was three of the things that I had taken. Thank you all very much for zipping in there and doing your purchases early. I apologize to those of you who were disappointed that I was out of certain things. I it, it was just it was like a bonanza year for me. I sold almost everything I took, which was great, but it meant that if you had Sunday or late Saturday budgeted to come through the booth, there were some slim pickings. So I will try to do better for Yarn Fest, which is coming up uh, at the end of March, not that far away. So I'm back in the dye room already doing catch up from stitches for a few special orders and trying to get ready to refill all of my stock to go to yarn fest. Um, I know several of you commented that you would probably also be at yarn fest so I will see you there. Um, a few different bases will come with me to yarn fest so it will be a slightly different look for some things than what I had at uh, stitches. Um, so if there was something specific that you would like me to bring uh, that you wanted to kind of look at or put in an order for for a project, please feel free to leave me a note um, or contact me via email or private message. 
I'm happy to do that if I can. So uh, let's move on to just some sort of catch up business. Um, the first thing I did want to share with you guys is a finished product project. This is the March club for the Herbarium Lace Club folks. So this would be your March, um, no, I'm sorry, not the lace, the texture club, texture and color club members. Um, this month I am doing the kits together with Blackwater Abbey. Um, Marilyn graciously agreed to provide yarn for me um, in her sport weight. The color weight is moss and it is this pretty shawl which is called Ivy Vines. So it's knit from two skeins of fingering weight, uh, sport weight yarn. And you can see the top half has this um, kind of climbing, let me back up. There we go. Climbing um, vine twisted stitch pattern. And then the border has this wide ivy leaf um, panel to it. Now, if you're not in the club and you would like to knit this shawl, um, you can also request it on my Freya DK, which knits up as a sport weight um, in any color you choose. It's a mix and match kind of thing. So um, club members should already have theirs. I shipped them out the day I got back, the day after I got back from stitches on the first. Um, pattern should already be delivered. So if for some reason you're watching this and you don't see that, let me know and I will get you taken care of. Um, so that is a finished, finished piece. Um, do I have anything else? What I'm currently working on. Just finished up a whole bunch of uh, finished pieces for the winter, you heard that right, the winter filament magazine. Kathleen and I decided that we would kind of jump ahead so that we could shoot some photos when it wasn't like overtly summery because that's when we would normally be shooting photos about six months out. So we finished all of the winter filament projects and if you follow me on Instagram or you follow the knit filament account on Instagram you will have seen the spring items rolling out. Um, I should have a print copy of the magazine in hand in about 10 days. And so I will share that with you guys on my next podcast. That one is very springy, all kinds of soft pinks and flowery themed projects. Um, and you can certainly check out all the patterns. They are currently all released on Ravelry um, and order yourself a copy if you're so inclined. Okay. Um, so what I'm working on now is the summer issue of Filament. Uh, just kind of got started on those projects that will be shooting photos I think late April is when we're gonna do that one um, so kind of looking forward to that jumping right in I've got two garments to work on to uh, kind of focus on over the next month to get those finished up um, it'll be a nice mix of various and sundry pro projects for the summer, lighter weight things, linen blend things, so very appropriately summer weight uh, yarns are, go are going to be featured in that issue. Excuse me, I'm, it's cold here today. The wind is up and even though it's supposed to be 70 degrees by Friday, it is kind of brisk out right now. So I'm having a second cup of um, Earl Grey tea today. Okay, um, anything else in the knitting world? I don't think so. Um, I have no spinning to show you guys. I was pushing so hard to get things finished, samples finished for Stitches West, and then the samples finished for the winter collection uh, for filament. I haven't done any spinning, and being away for that week, it just, it just didn't happen. So nothing to show you on that front, but I should have some the next time that I talk with you guys. Um, if you have followed my podcast for a while, you know last time I was planning on spinning up the February um, Wooly Wonka Fibers Fiber Club, um, which was a gradient, but I had so many requests for that. Uh, I wound up selling all the braids that I had dyed, so I don't have one for me currently. I need to get that dyed before I can spin it. So 
I may put something else on the wheel in between times because I have to prioritize my yarn fest dying before I prioritize dying for me. So stay tuned. We'll see. Um, I might have to just go totally off in another wild hair direction like I sometimes do. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what I feel like working on. Um, I did want to uh, talk about a book that I had been given a copy to review and is also going to be a giveaway. This is Knitting Short Rows, which um, is an interweave publication. The author slash designer is Jen Dassow, and if you remember um, several years ago in my Heroines Club, Jen designed the Katie, uh, Katie Scarlet shawl for Scarlett O'Hara. She did that one for me. And Jen loves interesting construction. So this book uh, covers a whole bunch of different things about knitting short rows. Now, I would call this book maybe half technical, like half technical reference and half pattern book, because there certainly are patterns in it, like this great shawl with the um, buttons on the side. Um, but the way that she's broken this down is each um, chapter has a short row method highlighted. So for instance, it starts out with wrap and turn, which if you've knitted short row heels on socks, you're familiar with what short rows do. Um, and she goes through all of the techniques, which I'll kind of hold back here, with great illustrations. And she talks about um, each technique has a special considerations page. And so the things that she's talking about here are where does this technique work best? Does it work best with stockinette or garter stitch or can you fit patterns into it? Does it um, does it lend itself to a certain type of construction? Is it better for um, a garment? Does it work well for, let's say, a shawl collar? Um, she kind of gives you helpful ways to know that the technique that you're choosing is going to work correctly with the project that you want to use. Um, so there are five different um, chapters. So she covers the wrap and turn method, the yarn over method, the German method, the Japanese method, which I have, had never seen before, so that was that was really fun to kind of learn something new, and then the twin stitch method, which if you've knit the fish lips kiss heel, that method is also discussed in here, um, broken down into step by step, and then once you've kind of figured out what you're gonna um, what type of short row would work best for your project, or maybe you want to learn how to do a specific type of short row technique. She gives you some awesome patterns, like this um, shawl, for instance, that's in the wrap and turn section. I like that one. I think that would be gorgeous with hand spun. And then, oh, I love this one too. It's called the Curve Wrap. Cardi, and look at the back, you guys. It has this pretty little accent. Isn't that great? So that's one of my favorites. It's also in the wrap and turn method. Let me skip along. Here's um, another gorgeous shawl. That would be wonderful to do with a hand paint or speckle dye and and solid color as opposed to the two solid colors they're showing here. Um, this sweater, which is the cover sweater, is really fun. There's cowls, there's hats, there's actually a fair number of garments in here, um, which you don't always see with uh, short rows. A lot of times you'll see them just for socks or just for a shawl. Um, I like this vest too. Isn't that fun? So um, I think this is a really great reference book, as well as having some fun projects in it. Um, definitely something I am happy to have on my bookshelf. So um, I'm going to open a thread in my Ravelry group, uh, which I'll put a link to in the show notes below. 
to enter the giveaway for this book, which will go, um, it will be open from this Monday, which is the 6th through till the following Monday. So you have a whole week to go to the thread. I'll put a link in the thread to the patterns that are in this book. So you can take a look at those. What I would like to know is what your current favorite project to use short rows on is. It's kind of bad English. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Do you love using short rows to shape a sleeve cap? Do you love to use them to add a little bit of extra width across the back of a sweater? Do you like to use do them in, in shawls or socks? What I want you to do is tell me what your favorite use of a short row technique is. It can be any short row technique. Um, I know a lot of people love the fish lips kiss heel. If that's what you like, leave, leave that as your comment. Um, and so I will draw one winner of this of a copy of this book. It's actually going to ship to you directly from F and W. Um, editor is going to send that out uh, once I draw that uh, winner's name. So I will draw that around lunchtime on Monday the 13th of March um, and you too can have a copy of this really great book by Jen Dassel. Okay, so there. See, I snuck that in in the middle so you'd have to watch some of the podcast. Hope, hopefully you all have are going to be doing that anyway if you've made it this far halfway through. Um, so the last little bit I just wanted to touch on a few things that are in the like other crafts and reading arenas. I took with me a cross stitch project on the road thinking oh I'm gonna finish up that cabled sweater and knit that cowl and I'll have like all this ood these oodles of time in the mornings because we don't get started till 10 and you know I'm up by at the latest at the latest six o'clock California time so I'll, I'll have time to do lots and lots of other things not so much uh, so I started a new project because it was small and it only required one thread color and that is this pattern which is called Quicker Valentine. It was a freebie for Valentine's Day from Tempting Tangles. And I have been working it with a hand dyed silk thread, which is gorgeous to work with. And I'm working it on a small hand dyed piece of fabric, which was sent as part of a sort of sample box for the February for the month of February holidays and here's where I am not very far but you can see that I've got some of the beading done now I will say that I did work on this a little bit yesterday but um, I basically had that center motif right underneath my finger none of this none of this got done when I was in California so I didn't get very far but it is a very small piece so I'm just gonna work on that probably this afternoon when I'm done recording for a little relaxation time um, and see how far I get because I I don't know maybe I'll take it with me for my next travel project maybe it'll get set aside I don't know um, I'm really enjoying working with the hand dyed silks they're beautiful to work with. I love the subtle tonal dye that you get with that. So yeah, all good. Um, that's really all I've been working on in that arena. Not very much. Um, it's been a little busy here. Gonna be busy here the next month too, but that's okay. Uh, and then I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I've been reading. So I finished the book of Retold Fairy Tales. I think I was halfway through that or thereabouts last time I talked to you guys. I enjoyed some of those stories a lot. Um, the Charles DeLint story was wonderful. Um, several others in there that perfect. They were perfect for me and my things I love. The retelling of fairy tales. There was a couple of them, like um, there was this story that was sort of a fairy tale version of Sid and Nancy. I did not care for that at all. It was just too creepy. I don't mind a little creepy, but this was really creepy. So, no thank you. You know, it's a mixed bag when you read short stories. You just, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, while I was on the road, I don't have a book cover to show you because I borrowed it from the library on my Kindle. 
Um, I read the book Olive Kittredge, which was a Pulitzer Prize winning book. Um, I read it for, I can't remember which week it was, but it was one of the challenge read topics, um, a book that was made into a movie. And I opted not to do one that was being made into a movie for 2017, um, but they had made this book, Olive Kittredge, into a movie. I think it was either two years ago, maybe even last year. Um, it was okay. I think I understand what the author was going for, but it didn't engage me to the point that I was like ravenously reading the book. I would give it like a B, B minus kind of scale. It was it was okay, uh, but I read it, finished it, um, took some things away from it, which I guess is always a good thing with a book, but um, it wasn't something that you know, I would want to turn to again and again. So I finished that. Um, then I haven't yet picked the next book on the list. I actually just finished the Olive Kittredge book yesterday evening. Um, so I'm, I think I needed something a little lighter. So I'm probably going to look for a historical mystery or historical fiction of some kind off the list. So I will let you know what I pick next time. Um, as always, you can uh, kind of see what I'm up to if you want to follow me on Goodreads. I do try to update that maybe a couple times a month, as well as my written blog. And so I'll link to those in the show notes as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so it's juniper pollen season here now. And when the wind's up, yeah, I have horrible allergies. Anyway too much information. I think that's it for this go round. Again, kind of a weird uh, podcast about things I'm crafting with nothing to show you guys. Um, we'll see if I can't remedy that for our next next podcast in a couple of weeks, which I'm going to try to do before we leave for Yarn Fest. Um, so we'll catch you guys up on things I'm bringing to Yarn Fest, uh, any new uh, patterns, new colors, new things like that. We'll do a uh, sort of pre-Yarn Fest update for next time. So until I see you, have a great couple of weeks. Um, I hope everything is going well at your end of the world, wherever you may be, um, and that you've had some time to enjoy some crafting and relaxing time for yourself. Thanks, guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye.